What's your five cent on the bus relocation from Bay Street? I'm for it. Doesn't really make any sense. Not at all. I think it's terrible. It is unprofessional because then we have to look at the elder people inside the country. Some behemoths, they don't think before they talk and before they get upset. Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned into MB12 Weekend, broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight in news, a family offers a reward in hopes of catching a loved one's killer. A prominent pastor says no to gun amnesty. PTC employees claim they were locked out of their offices. Customs officers demanding a supervisor's removal, plus a golden knight poised to return to the track. I'm Paige McCartney. We've got those stories and more straight ahead on MB12 Weekend. Welcome once again to MB12. Employees stationed at the Bahamas Telecommunications Company's Southwest Plaza location say they were shocked when they turned up to work this morning and could not gain access to the store. Employees questioned whether the locks on the doors were changed. This comes after scores of workers at BTC called in sick on Thursday, forcing the telecom company to close its flagship store at the Mall at Marathon and several other locations throughout the country. This was in protest of BTC's plans to downsize its staff complement as it prepares for the liberalization of the cellular market. The company intends to offer voluntary separation packages to as many as 150 employees. Supervisor at BTC's Southwest Plaza location, Cecil Knoll, said he was shocked when he showed up to work today. We are somewhat in some industrial unrest going on with BTC, with management and the union, and I think what is happening uh, because everyone would have known by now that there was an illness going on within BTC and the staff was sick for about two days, but now we showed up to work this morning and we don't have access to get it. MB12 contacted BTC's Vice President of Brand and Marketing, Aldrey Ferguson Mackey, who advised that BTC executives cannot provide comment on any matters involving employees at this time and that BTC's President Leon Williams may provide an update on the matter next week. Nevertheless, Noel said workers were prepared to work today after resting over the past two days. You know, everybody came you know, excited, uh, ready to work. You know, after having two days off, we were able to rest, recuperate, get well, and so we became ready to work. And you know, to our surprise, I met, when I came this morning, I met the security guards out here waiting. The cleaning persons were here. A number of staffs were here, but they left already because they seemed like the stores. And then, as you can see, more customers are coming. Now uh, we can't get access to the store. Bahamas Communications and Public Officers Union President Bernard Evans said earlier this week that the union intends to fight to protect the jobs of BTC employees. Well, grieving relatives of a man gunned down late last year hope to help police solve his murder by offering a $3,000 reward to anyone with information leading to the arrest of his killer. The night of November 2nd, 2014, changed Onyx Russell's life forever. Her husband, Michael, was shot and killed in the park area of Caves Village, leaving her to raise their two sons alone. Since then, Russell has been searching for answers, but said police have no leads on the case that she fears will go cold. A great young Bahamian man senselessly lost his life. Michael was a faithful husband, a loving father of two young sons. He was awarded Father of the Year at one of his son's schools. He would volunteer at the Children's Emergency Hostel and cut the boys' hair for school, and he was active in his church. The police force and us as a community need your help in bringing the criminals to justice. The young mother said her life has been shaken, and though the incident happened four months ago, it hasn't gotten any easier. We've been together a long time and still not adjusting to the reality of the situation. Yeah. 
Um, they are doing surprisingly okay. They have a lot of support from family, and they sometimes it's rough. A lot of times it's rough, but I, I'm proud of them. As a result, Russell, her family, and friends have raised a $3,000 reward to offer to anyone who can lead police to those responsible for her husband's murder. The family, along with the community, were able to raise $3,000 which is now being offered as a reward for information that will lead to the arrest and conviction of persons responsible. Please call 432-0023 with any information or tips that you may have. Calls are addressed to a private entity who is not in any way affiliated with the Royal Bahamas Police Force. All information is treated as strictly confidential. The grieving widow is convinced there's someone out there that knows something. No matter how big or small the tip, Russell wants you to contact police. Someone out there knows something. If we as good men and women do not stand up and fight back in whatever way we can, evil and lawlessness will continue to prevail. By bringing this murderer to justice, you may very well be saving your own life or the life of one of your loved ones. As we join together as a community and be each other's eyes and ears, the rapists, thieves, and murderers will have no place to hide. The family handed out flyers in the Carmichael Road area on Friday in hopes of spreading the word. Dr. Monique Thompson, the victim's sister-in-law, said, where police fall short, it's incumbent on the community to help solve these senseless crimes. As a nation, we, we are our brother's keepers. And the police, they can only do so much. Like their reach only goes so far. So in offering something like a reward, we, we feel that yes, it, it, it should be continued. You know, I, I wish we were in a situation where people would just volunteer information and they didn't have to live with the fear of you know, giving someone else up. But again, that's, that's our reality. So yes, it definitely should, should continue. And I wish more families were in a position to do it. Give this wife closure. Give the family members closure in this case. He left two kids. Give them all closure. No one should have to go through the feeling of lo losing a husband or even a father to the demon called murder. So we beckon again, once again to the public, whatever information you have, little or big, please feel free to call the number she gave, which is 432-0023. And again, the number to contact with information is 432-0023. Well, former chairman of the National Advisory Council on Crime, Bishop Simeon Hall says, He's against the implementation of a gun amnesty period. This after National Security Minister Dr. Bernard Nottage revealed government is considering a gun amnesty in an effort to reduce gun violence. Simone Davis has the story. Bishop Simeon Hawes says he does not disagree with the government's plan for a gun amnesty period, but he thinks more could be done to limit the presence of guns in the country. First, uh, let me say that the challenge we face with crime is multifaceted. Um, no one envies Mr. Nottage's position. And uh, as a churchman, we are continually supporting the principles he espouses, but sometimes we certainly differ uh, on some things he pronounces. In the last two years, he's made some, some uh, serious announcements but it doesn't seem that the criminal element uh, taking heed to anything he says. Minister of National Security Bernard Nottage said recently the government is considering implementing a gun amnesty period, but noted that previous attempts by the government to get people to turn in illegal guns have not worked. Instead, Hall said stiffer penalties should be implemented to limit the number of guns on the streets of New Providence. By Dr. Nottage's own admission, he says that uh, uh, amnesty has not worked. So why are we trying it again on the same level? My suggestion is, yes, let's try the amnesty, but let's put a little more bite into it. For instance, immediately when the amnesty period ends, we should double the penalty for gun possession. 
I think that would send a stronger message to uh, persons in possession of guns. Hall said most crimes happen because criminals have no fear for the law. The problem I have with amnesty is that these hardened criminals seem impervious to the pronouncements Mr. Nottage continues to make. I am calling on the minister to add some more bite to what he says. It is clear that we will no longer have any uh, capital punishment. To be honest, I could live with that. I, uh, you know, I've been on both sides of the issue of capital punishment, but I think we should send a clear message to would-be criminals that if you take life, you're going to go to jail forever. He called our judicial system weak, adding it is fueling vigilante justice. I do not hear strong messages from politicians that will cause a would-be criminal to think two or three times before I go and commit this crime. I mean, there just seem to be, uh, and the court system, I think the present situation in our courts, I think, is fueling vigilantism because a person does not have faith in the court system. He takes it upon himself. Now, there's no justification for that, but one could understand it. Hall also suggested a curfew in certain areas as a one of the ways to crack down on crime. It is a contradiction that the two uh, most crime-ridden constituency are that of Dr. Nottage and the Prime Minister. One cannot blame them individually, but those areas need some special attention, like curfew, like some draconian measures to be put in place. Reporting for NB12, I'm Simone Davis. And Long Island MP Loretta Butler-Turner is urging the government to stop blaming the opposition for the challenges it has faced ahead of this year's constitutional referendum. Prime Minister Perry Christie said recently he does not want to delay the constitutional referendum on gender equality again, but noted that both opposition and PLP members of parliament still have concerns about at least two of the constitutional referendum bills. FNM MP Hubert Chipman and PLP MPs Greg Moss and Andre Rollins have difficulty with the wording of the fourth question, which seeks to end discrimination based on sex. However, Butler Turner says the prime minister should avoid avoid casting blame at this stage in the game. I do not think that it's fair to lay the blame at the feet of the opposition. I think that when you look at the process, the process clearly demonstrated that the government did not come into this uh, in the right manner. Uh, since the questions have been tabled and laid in the House of Assembly, there still has not been that um, huge amount of educational process, even though they say they're going from island to island. I think that it really needs to engage a wider cross-section of civil society for the entire Bahamian population to understand what it is um, we're hoping to achieve. The gender equality vote is scheduled to take place before the end of June. It was originally set to take place in June 2013 and has been delayed four times. Butler Turner said government isn't giving it the priority it deserves. The fact that this was something that was brought onto the agenda um, totally uh, unaware to those of us, even in Parliament, much less public, uh, in June of last year, I think speaks clearly to the fact that this is a government that tends to operate in an ad hoc type atmosphere. The Long Island MP added that all Bahamians should support the four bills. I think it's an important issue for all Bahamians, um, Bah not just women. I think that until we realize uh, a society of full equality, we won't realize a society where we'll get our fullest potential.